class we have studied about what is biodiversity, types of biodiversity, we have studied about genetic biodiversity, we have studied about species biodiversity, ecosystem biodiversity or diversity. So varieties of it. And we had also uh, studied the graph for species area relationship. Then we had also discussed about the latitudinal gradient. That is, whenever we move away from the equatorial zone, you find that number of species of flora and fauna, that is plants and animals, or biodiversity is going to reduce whenever you move away from the equatorial zone. We also discussed about the tropical rainforest, that is the Amazonian rainforest. Why it is uh, the lung of this world because of maximum forest area that they have, maximum time. Okay, so that you have to remember about. And why is it that you have more amount of species there than anywhere else in the world? We have discussed about that. A very appropriate climatic condition. Maximum sunlight is reached. You know that at the equatorial region, you find maximum diversity of life because of solar energy which is received at maximum level at these zones. Okay. So the appropriate conditions and diversity of flora is also responsible for diversity of fauna. And they have remained unchanged because their seasons are predictable. You can predict when it is going to be summer, when it is going to be rainy season or uh, autumn or winter season in case of Amazonian rainforest. It is not like the glaciation that happens in the polar regions. So a predictable season is. Okay? And a stable forest for millions of years has resulted in our ecosystem is stable there because of which there has been uh, evolution of different species diversification of species has taken place. Okay. So we, which we had all discussed about. Then we had also discussed about some of the extinct species. Okay. And we are now discussing about the sixth extinction which might happen in the near future. Okay. And this is majorly not because of natural disaster, but anthropocentric reasons. That is because of human interference. There has been, there might be the sixth mass extinction where all the species might be wiped out just like dinosaurs and many of the plants and animal species disappeared during the uh, uh, Jurassic era. The same might happen at present because of human beings activity. That you have to remember about. The current extinction rate is 100 to 1000 times faster than the previous five extinctions that it took place. That is one point that you have to remember. All these are anthropogenic in nature. So what might be the effects of biodiversity loss? Each and every one of them are interrelated. You know about that. Ecosystem itself is interaction and interrelationship between biotic and abiotic components. If the biodiversity is less, biotic components are less, it leads to decline in plant productivity. Net primary productivity will fall down. Okay? Lower resistance to environmental disturbances. Perturb and re disturb. So they have lower resistance to this disturbances that might happen in nature. It can be flood, it can be a forest fire, it can be an earthquake. Any of this, it cannot withstand it. It cannot be resistant because there is less availability of biodiversity. If you remember in the uh, landslides when it happened in Kur as well as in Kodekinal after the heavy rains, acres of land disappeared. Majorly it was because of there were no trees or grasses to hold the soil together. Just try to remove the grass from the soil and see that the roots would have bound the soil in a very tight manner. Okay. So they are soil binders. The roots of Many of these grasses are soil binders. They avoid soil erosion. They avoid even landslides. Okay. So if we don't have such species, then the uh, environment gets disturbed, perturbed, maximum. So even drought conditions, you can see this is the drought conditions where 
failure of monsoon, availability of water is less, the cracking of our plants take place. If plants are not there, biodiversity is lesser, then they cannot withstand such drought. It might lead to complete disappearance of life there. Increased variability in certain ecosystem poses, such as plant productivity, which I have already told you, water use, and pest and disease cycle. All this would be the effects of loss of biodiversity. Okay? The causes of biodiversity, the evil quartate, quartate because the causes are four. Many times I have asked this for your examination. Okay? So the biodiversity loss, the evil quartate, what are they? Describe them. So what are they? You have to write the four factors, evil quartate. Habitat loss and fragmentation, over exploitation, invasion of alien species, co-extinction. One species extinct, it becomes extinct, the other species also becomes extinct. I was talking about dodo, the relationship between dodo and one of the trees. Now because of the disappearance of dodo, that tree's numbers have fallen down drastically. So co-extinction will happen. So you have to remember about this four evil quartets for loss of biodiversity. Very important question that you have. Okay. So the first part that we go for is habitat loss and fragmentation. One of the most important factor for biodiversity loss is habitat. Human beings have encroached into forest areas. They have converted into agricultural lands. You might uh, tell me that, sir, agricultural land also has plant and animals. But they are monoculture. They have only one type. See, from forest area, we convert them into grassland type. Especially in the Amazonian uh, rainforest, they are converting it into grassland forest. Why are they doing that? Because they want the cattle to feed on this grass. Why do they require cattle? Because there is a huge demand for beef meat of cattle, we call it as beef. There is a huge demand for soya bean. They are removing the forest and growing them. From 10%, they have, from 14%, the forest in tropical rainforest has reduced to 6%. This was at 2004, the data if you look into. Now we do not know what is the exact data. The Amazonian forest is considered to be the lungs of the planet. One month we might ask you. Because maximum oxygen is liberated from that forest that we require for our survival. Water cycle. Lot of such biogeochemical cycles are taking place in the Amazonian rainforest. So they are being replaced for cultivation of soya beans. They are being utilized for uh, the uh, converting these forest areas into grasslands to feed the cattle, which are utilized as meat, okay, which are consumed as meat. That is the beef part, what I was talking about. Okay. So degradation of many habitat is also happening by pollution and this threatens the loss of diversity. So these are the points that you have to write. Large areas are broken into small fragments. See the entire water circulation which are in Bangalore I am talking about, which Kempe Goda helped in having this uh, artificial tanks he built here and there to connect the uh, water system or water canals, natural water canals, so that throughout the year there is water available. Today we have fragmented them. Many of these uh, lakes have been enclosed, the shores of the lakes have been enclosed. We have made roads by bisecting the lakes, whether it is Hepburn Lake, where you have a road made in between the lake, or if you go to this uh, Yella Vallapashetti Lake at Virgonagar, after Virgonagar, okay, towards the Vaskote Road, when you are uh, going by, you find a road passing through the lake which has divided the lake into two parts. One side the water is available, the other side it is completely occupied by the beach like Iconia precipice, a lot of them are there. See, we are fragmenting them. We are cutting off the connections that they had, natural connections, what was there, we have cut them off. Okay. 
we are watershed management, we are not doing that. Which our ancestors used to do. Every village used to have a lake. If you look into many places, they named it after the lake. Tavre Kere, Yediyur, named after the lake. Wherever Kere comes, Mathi Kere, they all had Kere's. Now that has disappeared, only name is there. Okay. Our ancestors gave high priority for these lakes. They utilized it for domestic purpose. Water was utilized. At the same time, they saw to it that it was never abuse. Today that is happening. Okay. They all ended up as apartments. Most of these lakes, they have filled it up and they have ended up as apartments. So there is fragmentation that is taking place, which has resulted in biodiversity loss. Flora and fauna is lost. Okay. Over exploitation. See, even in us, we have meal and green. If you remember Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi's statement, there is everything for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. Even when there was a rainwater harvesting uh, topic that was discussed, you should have remembered about how rainwater that is falling on our roofs, we are losing it to the ditches and uh, it gets mixed with sewage water and we are losing it, they are processed and treated, it goes out of Bangalore and again comes back to Bangalore. When the pure water was available on the terrace, we are not conserving that. We don't have lakes to hold the water also. Earlier these waters would enter into the lakes, that is not happening. Aren't we exploiting this? Over exploitation hasn't it happened? Today, water scarcity is there, even though good rainfall is there, we go for bore wells. The underground water we have sucked it out. Nowadays, if you go more than 1000 feet, you are going to get water. If you go more than 200 feet, it would be the water will have more of fluorine content. In West Bengal and other places, they will be having uh, poisonous substances. Okay, arsenic they call it as if you remember. That is found in the water and they lead to uh, many diseases. See, today there is over exploitation of all the vegetation that is there because of our greed. Not need. Greed, even this is enough. But we would like to have it as marble stones. We would like to have granites here. Where are they going to come from? There is a demand from us. That demand goes to the granite quarry. Where they are going to do all this quarrying of it. Why do we require that? We used to live in a red oxide homes. Earlier to that, it was just soil which was uh, smeared with cow dung. That was the holder of the thing. But today we have changed our lifestyles. It has become more of greed. This greed is resulting in loss of vegetation, biodiversity, valuable loss of this. When need turns to greed, it leads to over-exploitation of natural resources, whether it is mountain, whether it is water, or land, forest, everything, they disappear. It has happened within 10 years in Bangalore. Now today, Bangalore has become greater Bangalore. It has expanded its areas into water places, into forest areas we are enclosed. Okay. So this is what you have to remember about the over-exploitation that we have. Many species extinction in the last 500 years, still as now, it has disappeared, they have become very less in number or completely disappeared. Passenger pigeons, rather it is messenger pigeons, not passenger. They used to take message, they used to, the kings used to train them. So they used to train them to carry the messages. Those have disappeared. Okay. Many marine fish populations around the world are over harvested. See, if they were fishing with their normal boats, we have enough fish. Fish is fruits of the oceans. Marine, I am talking about. Fruits of the river. Hills of fish, the Bengalis will be saying that. Okay. They are also source of food. Today we are over harvesting. 
we don't even allow them to complete their breeding process because of the huge ships that are there, over harvesting of fishes is also taking place, especially in China, it encroaches into all the oceans because of their huge need and greed of their people, we are losing it all. I'm not saying that we are not doing that, but they have better technology than us. They are over exploiting the natural resources. So marine fishers today, they have come down in their numbers. Many of them are also disappearing. Okay? So that you have to remember about because of over exploitation. Alien species invasion because of today the travel and uh, migrating and immigrating and emigrating it has become frequent. Diseases from other regions are getting inside. The weeds or plants from other regions are getting inside our country. Okay. There are many animals which are not native of our country have entered into our country and they have destroyed the endemic species which existed here. See there is one example of African catfish. If you leave it in a lake, you get a large number of good meat of this catfish. But the local varieties of fishes, the endemic varieties of fishes, they are all consumed by this catfish, African catfish. So you should understand how the uh, entry of one species is going to completely destroy. Or Icornia precipice, I always say that. It is an alien species, invasive alien species. Parthenia visceroporus, it is also an invasive alien species. Today they have predominated our vegetation. Earlier they were not seen, around 50 to 100 years back, they were not seen in this country. Today they are seen in this country, but our native plants have all disappeared because of this invasive plants. Terror of Bengal, we are calling it now, Icornia, precipice or water hyacinth. They are occupying the lakes and they make a cover and the sunlight cannot penetrate into the water because they would have formed a carpet-like cover on them. They multiply very fast, Icornia precipice. So the fishes that are below the water, they die due to lack of oxygen. The plants would be taking the oxygen that is dissolved in water. So the fishes have BOD, biological oxygen demand increases. Once they are not able to get oxygen from water which is dissolved in water, they die out of suffocation even though they are in water they die out of suffocation because of lack of oxygen in water. So these are things that are happening that you have to remember. See, Nile perch introduced into Lake Victoria in East Africa led to extinction of 200 species of chiclet fish in the lake. I just spoke about the African catfish which many of them are introducing it. Earlier I don't think we had so many varieties of rohu and katla in our lakes. Today, many of the breeders, they are introducing this popular food varieties of fishes that is rohu and katla. Okay, we had our own varieties of fishes which are disappearing since they cannot compete with this introduced fishes which are very much aggressive. They are not able to overcome them. Parthenium, carrot grass, lantana camera, water acid, they are all posing a threat to indigenous species of plants and sometimes they also cause death of fishes in water, especially water hyacinth, I told you. Okay. So African catfish, which I was discussing about, even in India they have introduced it because they grow into large varieties. I read in newspapers, some of them even have the capability of swallowing a small child, a small child. They are, some of them are 5 to 6 kgs in weight and they are carnivores, very aggressive. Okay. Maybe for their meat purpose they grow these fishes, but when you introduce them, the endemic species of fishes are all eaten by these fishes. So it is universally African catfish is a threat. Clarius, Garipinus, for aquaculture purpose is posing a threat to indigenous catfishes in our rivers. We have our own variety of catfishes which are disappearing because of this African variety of catfish that we have introduced. Okay, this is the third quartet. Fourth one. What is that fourth evil? Co-extinction. Co-extinction is 
when one species disappears, the other species which was dependent on it, directly or indirectly, they also disappear. So there is an extinction of two species together. Co-extinction we call it as. Okay. The plant and animals species associated with it, with it in an obligatory way. What do you mean by obligatory? Compulsory. It was not temporary. Compulsory dependent on them. They were interdependent on them, plant and animal. Those species become extinct. Okay. So extinction of host species, it is going to lead to a parasites on the host species. If they disappear, if host disappears, the parasite also disappears. We have discussed that in parasitism. Haven't we discussed the examples of parasitism? Okay. So if the host disappears, the parasite also disappears. So there is extinction of both host and parasite. Okay. Then co-evolved plant pollinator. So they help each other. The flowers look like the female of insects. Why should they look like female of insects? Why should they be a mimicry in nature? They want to attract the male insects and which will help them in pollination. Only when pollination happens, fertilization will happen. There is a formation of seed which is important for the plant, for the next generation to form. Seed is required, isn't it? That is their offspring or progeny. So that is also what you have to remember. The plant pollinator will also be mutualism which have evolved together will also be affected by this. Co-extinction might happen to them. Now biodiversity conservation because we had the name of the topic as biodiversity and conservation. We have discussed now the even quartets of biodiversity, four quartets. What all we discussed? Habitat loss and fragmentation, over exploitation, third one was invasion of alien species, fourth one was co-extinction. Co Both we had discussed them all. Is that it? Now what we will discuss is conservation. We have to conserve them. What are the methods of conservation? So why should we conserve? What is the reason? Carl Nayak. What is the reason for conservation? See, narrowly utilitarian purpose it might be. The purpose might be three. Broadly utilitarian ethical purpose. For our utility purpose, majorly for utility purpose and ethical purpose also is there. Like some of us have associated plants with religion, Tulsi plant. Okay, some plants you find only in temples, banyan tree, people tree, okay, uh, Tulsi plant, the white variety of Calotropis, okay, so the white variety of Calotropis, all these are noticed only in the temples, they grow there for their ethical purpose. So narrowly utilitarian, what are all the things that you can notice? We have benefits from them, these plants. We are going to get food from cereals. Cereals are all this dhanya. Pulses are kadu. Okay. Then fruits, firewood, timberwood, construction material. Then you also get industrial products like tannins. Turpentine is also obtained from pinus. Okay, the notes, currency notes are used preparing the bark of pinus trees. Okay, so lubricants, dyes, resins, perfumes. Many of the plants are having medicinal importance. You have this resin pine, which is obtained from Rahul Fia. I have not discussed that in genetics, but Rahul Fia species, Sarpaganda, Ashwagandha. They are all medicines which are utilized in Ayurveda, but they are obtained from plants. So they are the narrow utilitarian purpose, bioprospecting. We should explore their genetic and species level diversity for products of economic importance. See, there are wild varieties and cultivated varieties. We should conserve both of them. Because in the near future, we do not know which wide variety is required. In the lab called nature, there is wide varieties has been done. In the lab called human beings fields, 
we have obtained this uh, cultivated varieties, which is beneficial for us. We require to conserve both of them, wild varieties as well as the cultivated varieties, which we also call it as cultivars. Both are required to be conserved because in the near future we might require to make a hybrid from them. Okay, if there is a climate change. We might require some hybrids, so we require the wild varieties also, which are resistant to climate changes. And you combine with the cultivated variety which are growing in good yield. So you will uh, try to obtain a plant which is resistant to climate as well as it gives good yield. Okay. Broadly utilitarian, this might not have any uh, immediate economic uh, gains might not be there. But they are useful. Amazon rainforest, nearly 20% of oxygen which is released during photosynthesis of the entire world is made by the Amazonian forest. Okay. Pollinator. The bees are going to bring about fertilization of flowers which results in the formation of fruits. All the fruits that you consume, whether it is brinjal, tomato or mango, jackfruit, all of them they should undergo uh, fertilization, isn't it? What is going to bring the fertilization? Honey bees are going to do it. Do you pay money for them? For the pollination purpose? No. So they are broadly utilitarian. We are obtaining the gains of that. See, many services in nature are free. If you put a tag for it, price tag for it, many of the fruits we cannot purchase. Many of the things we cannot touch them because their contribution of oxygen, their contribution of wood or fruit to nature is so high that it would be crores of rupees. We cannot even touch them. But we don't have a price tag. So anything which comes free, we don't give significance to it. So when we start purchasing oxygen cylinders for our breathing purpose, the cost of each and every oxygen cylinder then we will rely, realize the three things that we obtain from these plants, the biodiversity that we have. Still then we won't understand it. Okay. So aesthetic pleasure we get from the biodiversity. What will you do if you are stressed out after your examination? You want to go to your village. Why do you go to your village? It is filled with biodiversity, fresh air. Or you go to some ashrams or visit hill stations because they have landscape. Go to Kodai Penal, the forest areas, the cool climatic condition. All these are because of the existence of forests. So aesthetic pleasure we get from biodiversity. Even you would like to have a garden. You know, even when you are having your food, you would like to have a very good landscape view. Isn't it? You would like to be amidst the plants. It is going to give you serenity which cannot be purchased. So aesthetic purpose is there from biodiversity. So this is the broadly utilitarian. Narrow utilitarian immediately I get money from it. We don't get money but they are broadly utilitarian which is required for us. 20% of oxygen for Amazon rainforest. We should be grateful for that Amazon rainforest rather than eliminating it. How can we conserve biodiversity? Yes, after listening to all this, you want to conserve biodiversity. Yes, sir, at any cost. And save each and every insect and plant that we have on earth. What will you do? There are two methods of conservation. In situ conservation, ex situ conservation. Okay? In situ conservation, on site. On site conservation. Natural Ipindana, what you do is you put a fence around it and say it as Banarvetta National Park, Mudumalai Forest, National Park, Sanctuaries, okay. forest areas, forest reserve areas, reserve forests. Or what can you do? You can also do reforestation. Reforestation. So these are all things that you can do. See, when we conserve and protect the whole ecosystem, its biodiversity, all levels protected. What should we do? Mining activities should be stopped at sensitive areas. Hot spots of 
biodiversity is where is the hot spots western ghats and eastern himalayas they are the hot spots of biodiversity so you should protect that area green tribunal we do have that they don't implement the rules and regulations very strictly when we protect them those areas whatever flora and fauna is there they get automatically protected there should be no human activity in those zones okay that is one aspect that you can remember about on site conservation is what we call it as in situ conservation you protect the flora and fauna which is already existing then biodiversity hotspots these are the regions where there is wide variety of species the okay, richness of species and diversification is there see regions with very high level of species richness and high degree of endemism what do you mean by endemism plants which have originated from that place plants which are found only in this area we call it as endemism what are those endemic plants that we might have like i told you mangifera indica tamarindus indica ficus bengalensis felix bengalensis bengal tiger okay indian elephant asian elephant okay african elephant is different isn't it asiatic elephant african elephant there are many plants and animals which are found only in india we have to protect them they are endemic here so hot spot regions are those places where they have high level of species richness high degree of endemism for one mark they was defined hot spot regions so we have species that what are endemic species are there species that are confined to a particular region and not found anywhere else we call them as endemic species which have originated also in that place we call them as endemic species okay then hot spot in biodiversity is also regions of accelerated habitat loss just take nandi hills savarpura they have not stopped mining activities even there when you are going through those roads at least some of the people who had that eco consciousness they put some cases public interest litigation and stop them from destroying the mountains or else you not have had nandi hills or you not have this uh, savarpura mountains so there are many people who had to fight to the name to prevent from mining activities what can we do as students as future next builders what can you do you can say no to granites you can say no to marbles when you stop saying to it there are alternatives you can go for vitrified things vitrified things is not so much harmful but even 